guys, it's Kyle of the How To Guy123 here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Minecraft Bedrock Edition server. Now before I actually get into the tutorial, I want to go over and explain a few important details, but if you just want to skip right to the tutorial, I'll leave a timestamp on screen right now to the point in the video where it starts. Anyways, the first thing I'd like to mention is that dedicated Bedrock servers are still in the alpha stage of development. This means they are still being worked on by Mojang and they may contain bugs and glitches when you play on them. Additionally, even though Minecraft Bedrock Edition is cross-platform, meaning you can play across different devices and consoles, Bedrock Edition servers only allow players on Windows 10 and Pocket Edition to connect, so people playing on consoles like the Xbox One, PS4, or Nintendo Switch will not be able to play on your server, but players on iOS and Android devices along with Windows 10 can connect fine. Finally, at the time of making this video, Minecraft Bedrock Edition is on version 1.14.60, so this is the version I'll be making a server for, but as far as I'm aware, this, should, this process should be the same for newer versions of Bedrock Edition, but if anything changes, I'll let you guys know in a pinned comment down in the comment section of this video. Alright, so that's enough talking, let's actually go ahead and get right into the tutorial. Alright, so the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to your internet browser, and you're going to want to head over to minecraft.net slash download, and I'll leave a link for this in the description below. So once you're on this page, you're going to want to scroll down until it says, um, download Minecraft server software. Obviously, we're not going to want to download the Minecraft Java Edition server software, because that's obviously for Java Edition. We're going to want to download just the Minecraft server software, which is for the Bedrock Edition. So go ahead and click get it here, and then you're going to want to download the one for Windows, so Windows server software. So you're going to want to make sure you agree to the end user license agreement and the privacy policy and then click on download. So now it's going to ask you where you want to put your server software and I'm just going to put it on my desktop for easy access. So I'm going to go ahead and click on save and that's just going to download the server software. So once it's done downloading, we can go ahead and minimize out of our browser and you can see we now have a zipped folder on our uh, desktop. And we're going to need to extract the zip folder and you can use any program you want to extract this. I like to use WinRAR and if you don't have WinRAR, I'll leave a link for it in the description below. But like I said, you can use any extraction program you want. But anyways, just go ahead and right -cl click on the zip file and extract to bedrock server 1.14.60.5 backslash. And what this is going to do is going to put all the files in the zip folder into its own folder on our desktop. So now you'll see that we have this folder on our desktop. Go ahead and double click on it to open it. And you'll see we have all these different files in the folder here. And the one we're going to want to focus on first is server.properties. This file contains all the settings for our server. And to open it, you're just going to want to right click on it and then click on open with and then notepad or you could use whatever text editor you want like notepad plus plus. But in this case, I'm just going to use notepad. So double click on it to open it with notepad and notepad's going to open and you'll see all these different settings for your server. I won't go through all these, but the ones I just want to highlight here are, for example, server name. This is the name of your server that's going to show up in game. So in my case, I'll just change this to the how to guy 123 tutorial. Uh, game mode survival. So this is the game mode that's on your server. I'm actually going to change this to creative just to make things a little bit easier for myself. Difficulty, if you want to change that to any difficulty you want. So peaceful, easy, normal, or hard. Cheats, if you want to allow cheats on your server. Uh, max players, so the amount of the maximum of players that can play on your server at one time. So you can uh, make this number a little bit bigger if you want. Just keep in mind that the more players you have on your server, the uh, worse the performance of your server is going to be. So one more thing I want to highlight is player idle timeout. So this is the amount of time in minutes that if someone is AFK or idle on your server and not moving, after 30 minutes they'll be kicked. Uh, I'm just going to leave that to zero. Uh, just so people can AFK on the server and uh, also if you want to use a specific seed for your world so in this case I'll just enter the seed one two three so your server your server's world is going to have the seed as one two three so if you just want to add a custom seed you can do that there and I think that was the last thing I want to go over in the server.properties folder but once you're done editing it just come up here to file and then click on save to save your changes and we can now exit out of notepad so one more thing I actually want to highlight in this folder here is you'll see a file here called bedrock server how to.html. One thing, oh yeah, one more thing I also want to highlight is if you don't see these file ext extensions here, click on view at the top of the folder here, then make sure to check file name extensions. So we're going to want to open this bedrock server how to.html and that's going to open in your internet browser. And this is basically just a how to guide of how to use certain features of your server. So configuration highlights the different options you have in server.properties and what they mean. It also shows what all the files in the 
uh, folder here, do, and it also shows some of the commands you can use in your server. So the only thing I really want to take a look at on this file here is up at the top here, you'll see this command here. And what this command does, it allows you to connect to your server that's running on your own computer. And we're going to need to enter this command into command prompt. So you're going to want to highlight it, right click on it, and then copy it. And you're going to want to open command prompt. So to do that, come down here to the start button, then type in CMD. And you'll see command prompt here, and you're going to want to make sure to right click on it and run it as an administrator. So once you have command prompt open, we're going to want to paste that command into command prompt here. And to do that, all you have to do is right click uh, in the box here, and that's going to paste the command. And just go ahead and hit enter, and you'll see here it says OK, so that means everything was successful. And we're actually going to want to minimize command prompt because we're going to need to come back to it later. And uh, we can now minimize out of our web browser and head back into our Bedrock server folder. And now we can finally launch our server. So to do that, you're going to just want to double click on bedrockserver.exe. And you'll see this window is going to pop up and it's going to start to load your server. You'll now see that server has started. So now our server is up and running. So let's see if we can actually connect to our own server. So to do this, we're going to open up Minecraft Windows 10 edition. So once it's loaded, go ahead and click on play and then click on servers, and then you're going to want to click on add server. So under server name, you can give it whatever name you want, so we'll call this my server. Under server address, you're going to want to type in 127.0.0.1, and what this IP address means is it's going to connect to your server that's running on your own computer. And then under port, you're going to want to leave that as 19132. I click on save to save your server and if we scroll down you'll see my server here and it also has the name that we gave in server.properties it might take a second for the green bar to come up here to show that it's up and running but it uh, should say zero out of ten players here and let's go ahead and click on it to load our server give it a second sometimes uh, it doesn't work on your first try so if it does fail to connect on your first try just try to connect to it a second time and hopefully it works and you can now see we are on our server so right now at this point, only you yourself can connect to your own server that's running on your computer. And also people on your local network could connect to it if they have your private IP address. Uh, but anyways, we're going to need to do something that's called port forwarding to allow other people from any internet connection around the world to connect to your server. So to do that, we're going to want to exit out of Minecraft here. So just hit escape and then save and quit. And we can just exit out of Minecraft here. And we're going to want to stop our server and to stop your server you're just going to want to type in stop in the in the command window here make sure you don't close out of your server because that could cause some issues with your world so hit, type in stop and then hit enter and that's going to stop your server so this step might be a little bit different for everybody depending on you know your router because everybody has different routers uh, so i'll leave this link in the description below and this is going to be a guide on how to pour forward on your router so you're just going to want to come to this page here and you're going to want to find your router. If you don't know what router you have, you physically just go up to your router and it should say on the router which one you have, which model of router you have. So it's uh, organized in alphabetical order. In my case, I have a TP-Link router, so I'm going to click on T here and I'm going to find TP-Link. And you'll get this little ad here, just click on close. And I have an Archer C7 and basically this is a guide on how to pour forward on the Archer C7. And I'll actually go through it myself. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find some information about our network. And to do that, we're going to need to open command prompt. So that's why I mentioned to leave it open from before. And you're going to want to type in the command ipconfig. Hit enter and you'll see a whole bunch of network information come up here. And you're going to want to find whether you're on Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So in my case, I'm connected to my computer over Ethernet. So I'm going to locate Ethernet adapter ethernet and then this is all the information about my computer's uh, information on my internet connection so you'll see something here that says default gateway and we're going to want to copy this ip address and we're going to want to open a tab in our internet browser and just paste that into the address bar and a username and password prompt is going to come up and each router has a default username and password that it comes with so in my case uh, on the TV link it's ad admin and the password is also admin and then I'm going to click on sign in and that's going to bring me to a page that shows all of my router settings 
So I'm now going to want to look for something that says port forwarding. So it says here forwarding. I'm going to want to click on that. So this is the page here we're going to want to port forward on. I actually have done this before, so I'm going to delete uh, what I already have. And I'm going to click on add new. And you'll see this page here. And this is the information we're going to need to enter to port forward. So under service port, we're going to want to enter 19132. And this is the port that the Bedrock Edition looks for when connected to a server. And this will be the same for everybody. So make sure to enter 19132. Same with internal port. And under IP address, we're going to want to head back into our command prompt here. And you'll see under here, IPv4 address. We're going to want to enter that where it says IP address. So we're going to want to enter 192.168.1.113, I think it said. Or was it just 13? Yeah, it was 113. Uh, under protocol, you're going to want to select all. Or you might have another option that says TCP slash UDP. And you're going to want to choose that. Uh, under status, choose enable, and common server support, we can just leave that uh, as nothing. So we'll click save, and we have now successfully port forwarded on our network. Alright, so now that we have port forwarded, we're going to actually want to open a new tab in our internet browser, and you're going to want to type in what is my, my IP. And it's going to open up in Google and you'll see here it should say your public IP address and this is and this is the number you're going to want to give to your friends to connect to your server. So I'm going to have mine blurred out here because this is kind of sensitive information. Remember to only give your IP address out to people you trust because the IP your IP address can be uh, kind of dangerous if you give it out to people who shouldn't have it. Uh, but this is the number you're going to want to give to your friends to connect to your server. Anyways, we're going to want to now minimize your exit out of your browser, we can now exit out of command prompt, and we're going to want to launch our server again with uh, bedrockserver.exe. Alright, so our server is started. So now let's go ahead and try to connect to our server again. So I'll open up Minecraft, play, servers, and we're going to actually edit our, the server we made before, and instead of using the server address, let's actually try and connect with our public IP address. So I'll just paste in my public IP address from what's my IP on Google, save it, and let's see if it's green, and it is, so that means people should be able to connect to your server no problem, uh, and let's try and join our server. And perfect, our server is now up and running, and other people should be able to connect to it, uh, so we'll try and get another account in in a second, but a few more things I wanted to show you guys is I'm actually just going to put Minecraft to the side here and have our server console uh, on the side, and um, I'd recommend making yourself an op, and an op is basically like a server administrator that lets you all use all of the commands. And uh, basically, to, to make yourself an op in your server console, just type in the command op and then the username, your username. So in my case, it's Zeta Bytes. So basically, I've made myself an op, and now I'm able to use all the commands like change game mode. Uh, I can hack in items, and basically, just use your you know your standard commands. Mm -hmm. So finally, I'm actually going to go ahead and try and connect to the server from my Android smartphone. So now I'm on Minecraft on my Android smartphone, and let's try and connect to the server that's running on my Windows 10 PC. So let's click on play. Servers, I've already went ahead and added the server here. Uh, let's give it a second to load. And... And you can see that it has loaded the server, and I'm also connected to the server on Windows 10. So let's go ahead and tap on it. Uh, click on proceed. There we go. So we've joined the game, and you can see there's my uh, there's my other account on Windows 10. Go ahead and uh, oh, it's in creative, so I can't actually uh, hit him. So we've successfully connected to my Minecraft Bedrock server that is running on my PC. So basically, that is all there is to it to making a Minecraft Bedrock server. Uh, it's you know like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's still in development, still in alpha mode, so you'll probably encounter a lot of problems and a lot of bugs, so uh, take it with a grain of salt, I guess. Uh, and uh, if you have any problems or any questions, leave them down in the comment section below, and I can try my best to help you guys out. I also have a Discord server, uh, which I'll also leave a link for in the description below if you want to uh, join that, and I can help you uh, with your server on there as well. But anyways, I hope this video helped. If it did, leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. So that's basically it for the video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.